Hey guys, Dan here with Battlefield Curator. Milsurp Mike channel wants to see my top five oldest Milsurps. Hmm. Well, he also made a video with his top five oldest Milsurps, and so did Readiness Reviews. And if you want to see both of their top five oldest videos, I've put their links in the description. Uh, but just like uh, Milsurp Mike did his video, I'm going to kind of do that. I've got a couple honorable mentions. Uh, that uh, one's just not in shootable condition, and I think it should really be mentioned because I got it uh, for a pretty cheap price. It was all gunked up, and I've kind of worked it a little bit so where it, it actually functions now. And, um, you know, I'm going to go, when I actually list off these rifles, I'm going to go from the newest, oldest model to the oldest model, or the oldest dated. So the first one here is a very innovative Swiss Vetterli rifle. Now, the Swiss Vetterli uh, was used in the 1870s by Switzerland. It actually uh, has a tube that holds, just like the Labelle, it holds uh, rounds right here in a tube magazine that's inside of the rifle. Um, and what would happen is, and these are shooting black powder cartridges, so the downside is this rifle would get gunked up pretty easily uh, because of the black powder cartridges. Uh, it was a uh, rim fire type cartridge where it has a fork and the firing pin is kind of like a fork and it hits the outer rims of that cartridge. So that way when you load these rounds into the tube magazine, they don't uh, accidentally cause an, uh, a discharge in the tube magazine. The interesting design about these is the action. You would pull up on the bolt handle and then you would pull back this uh, is like a is like a is, there's an extraction that happens and then this raises the next round to the bolt face so that you can just push in the next round there. Pretty cool design, a uh, really interesting rifle, but uh, it had its flaws and was quickly outdated. All right, so the next rifle I'm going to talk about here is the Model 1893. It's a Mauser made in Germany, but this was for the Spanish uh, contract. Now there the this, Germany did make some uh, 1893 models for the Boer War, for the Boers and the Tsar, but this one is Spanish. Uh, now, I'm going to guess that this is an 1897 date. There's no definitive way to really get a, a date code from this rifle, but it does have the newer DWM uh, maker's mark on there, which means that this is post-1896. And this is a very significant rifle in history especially with U.S. history, because during the Spanish-American War, the U.S. was fighting uh, troops that were fighting the enemy that were armed with M1893s and 1895s. And the U.S. thought that these were way superior to their crags and their Springfield trapdoors. So they looked into this, and they pretty much made a Mauser copy known as the M1903. All right, so now here we go, the top five. And this is the newest of the oldest I have here. And this is a Mosin, a three-line rifle, M1891. Uh, this one here is dated 1895 on the barrel and dated 1895 on the rear tang. So the finish did get a hold of it. And they did mark it, and they did uh, mark up the rear sight. But essentially this, and they also put a stock on it, you could tell. It's got that Arctic birch stock that is very uh, cool-looking, tiger-striped and everything. And this rifle would serve, you know, the Soviet Union and Finland and a lot of other countries throughout the First and Second World Wars. All right, number four is the Krag Jorgensen U.S. Springfield Model 1892. It's actually dated 1894, but the serial number puts it at 1895. Uh, so this rifle was used by the U.S. It shot the 3040 Krag, and very significant in history. Yet again, I just picked this one up this year. It is a very nice rifle. It was in great condition. It's not sporterized. And, and this one's really a true testament to uh, what the U.S. was looking for uh, when it came to repeating rifles in smokeless powder. And this one they picked up, and it was only in service for a very short time, and they finally replaced it with the uh, model of uh, 1903. Like I said, going back to Spanish-American War, they that was when they realized that 
the Mauser outclassed the Craig Jorgensen's. All right, number three, I have a Gewehr 88 that is uh, dated 1890. And this one, it looks to have been refurbished for import, uh, or that is just really well kept. But, uh, I'm pretty certain it was refurbished for import. It is not a model 188 It has not been converted to the 05. It has, uh, it has original markings on there. And the interesting thing is I did get it bore tested. Even though it doesn't have an S on the receiver, it is a, it does have, it does measure out to a 323 bore. So, which means that it's not a 318. So that just means that at some point it was modified to fire the newer type 8 millimeter cartridges. All right, number two on my list. Uh, it's a beat up. Gewehr 88. Yeah, this one uh, was in pretty bad condition when I got it. Um, it's dated 1889, and it's actually made by Steyr, uh, which makes it really desirable, in my opinion, because Steyr, you can see the Steyr is actually a really good uh, gun manufacturer these days. Uh, they've been around for quite a while. And this one here, um, I changed out the barrel shroud because the non-matching barrel shroud that was on there was just pitted, corroded, somebody painted it black, thinking they could probably save it, didn't work out. So I ended up putting a new barrel shroud on here with the help of my buddy, and we uh, we got it to fit and shimmed it right. So it works out, and uh, it's a shooter. I've uh, shot it once, um, really haven't shot it any time after that. But yet again, this is not an 05 modification. This is a 1888. This one does have the S mark on there which means that it has been, uh, the, the chamber and the bore uh, is has been measured to 323. All right, and number one on my list here, the oldest Millsurp rifle that I have that is in working condition is a Trapdoor Springfield model 1894. On the stock, this one is dated 1889. Uh, it does shoot. I shot it actually just this weekend. This was another acquisition that I ended up getting this year. I got it through a, a private sale. A friend of mine uh, was getting rid of some of the rifles in his collection, and he offered them to me. And uh, I really thanked him because he really had a couple good ones. And I'm going to make a video about my top acquisitions in 2022 uh, because I feel like, hey, you know, some people say there's not any good deals out there. Well, I'm going to share some deals with you. Going back, this rifle, a Springfield Trapdoor, it shot black powder cartridges uh, that were, uh, you know, it would get gummed up and it was a single shot rifle. So in that case, you know, it, it was by the time it was even introduced, it was already outdated and outclassed. But the U.S. military wanted something simple. They didn't want to waste ammo. They wanted to stick with something that was uh, tried and true, uh, but not go too far into innovation and waste money on something that uh, might cause problems in the future. Well, anyways, the Springfield trapdoor was just causing problems anyways. So they uh, ended up adopting the Krag Jorgensen after that. And that's a little bit of the history on some of the rifles that I have. So let me know what you guys are finding out there as far as really old military surplus. And if you like this kind of content, be sure to like the pulverize button. It really helps out with the algorithms. Also be a subscriber to the channel if you have not. Make sure that you subscribe so you can see future videos. And if you know anybody that really likes this kind of content as well, uh, you know, share this video with them or share the channel with them. And as always, uh, be sure to learn history and curate history. Make it a great day.